apparently there's a lot of testing facilities out there that are forging test results. I kind of knew that already. Like that's not a new thing. From what I've heard, at least from this recent article, they doing a lot more than just that. Myself. What a wonderful world. Of course, the great thing about the focus V, it goes twice. <coughs> Green means go. <sighs> but alrighty, y'all, what is good, everyone? I hope all of y'all are doing amazing. I just took this fat ass dab of some Nug. That'll focus. Yeah, some Nug Blackjack. It's pretty fire. Um, I think it was a sauce. It was a live resin sauce. But I always love Jack. Jack just is always a, you know, a very energetic, productive type strain for me. But yeah, so getting on to the video. I feel like I've explained this story so many times to a bunch of different people that now it's gonna be practically second nature. So you have the vape crisis, right? Obviously, I have talked about this in my previous in one of my previous videos as well but you have the vape crisis obviously a lot of people got scared a lot of people still are scared about vapes and there's even states out there that are banning vapes altogether when really that's not necessarily the case with the vape crisis obviously it's going to make people want to be more educated about what they're consuming right so Every, anything that's not air that's going into your lungs is going to be bad for you. So when people try and find an alternative and that being vapes, there can be many different ways where people can take shortcuts, at least manufacturers. That's why you've been seeing vitamin E, acetate, and all of those other weird chemicals in your vapes. So I'm kind of like straying away from the actual topic, but like I was saying, it's gonna have people want to be more educated about what they're consuming. And one of the best ways to, I guess, get your fact, get your nutrition facts about your cannabis or whatever you're consuming that has a cannabis product in it, um, you can look at what is called a COA, and that's a certificate of analysis. These COAs are supposed to show you that your product has been tested for all of the different microbials, heavy metals if needed, water activity and all of that stuff. COAs are supposed to be people's insight into what they're actually consuming. And from what I've heard, there are testing facilities out there that are straight up passing stuff that should not be passed. <clears throat> so this company I have just recently read about, but apparently there's a lot of testing facilities out there that are forging test results. I kind of knew that already. Like that's not a new thing. From what I've heard, at least from this recent article, they doing a lot more than just that. So what I mean by that is there is this testing facility called Canasafe. I didn't realize until I, until I read the article that they are actually a Florida based company and that they have testing facilities out here in California as well. When you have a testing facility that doesn't necessarily get their job done or they just kind of sweep things under the carpet, you guys are gonna get exposed in one way or another and it's gonna be bad for you. Canasafe, they have three different owners. I don't know exactly their names, but I'll put their, I'll put their names up here somewhere. Um, but two out of the three owners, they have another company called Smart Pharmacy. Now, I didn't really look too much into what that company really was, but I mean, you can kind of think it's pretty self-explanatory. So I clicked the link that was in this article and it led me to a page by the Department of Justice. 
talking about feds actually going after these two owners because they were crushing up an antipsychotic pill and putting it into topical bombs. Yeah. So obviously there is no benefit to putting crushed up antipsychotic pills into bombs. And from what I found out, they were only doing that to meet their quotas for their refills. Cause I'm sure probably the freaking owners were taking some off the end. So they had to use it up in some way. So that doesn't even have anything to do with CannaSafe. And you can only imagine what CannaSafe has been doing if you have two CEOs, two of the three CEOs, and the third one is really kind of a friend of the two that are pretty much just some corrupt ass motherfuckers. <laughs> we already know that there are some testing facilities out there that actually bump up testing results. And as it is, there's actually a 10% variance in just basic cannabis testing and packaging. So if you see a flower that is testing at 26%, for all you know, it could be 16%. You never really know exactly what you're gonna be getting. Everything is pretty much a ballpark. And even for the cannabis industry, that variance is actually one of the smallest compared to like actual pharmaceutical medicine that you get over the counter and even your food. So just goes to show that this is still the most regulated industry next to the actual army. I mean, I had a coworker that actually told me that there is no other industry that she has worked in that has been more tracked than the actual army tracking how many 50 cal bullets they're buying. And each one that gets used, that's just like in those machine guns, just da, 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 da. That's just boop, all money just flying out right there. And they're tracking every single one of them. So when people try and come in and ask for COAs and stuff like that, just know that you still may not even be getting the exact results of what's actually in your cannabis product. And you know what, it's kind of funny because I actually just talked to someone from CannaSafe and honestly, I feel like that person has no idea about what's actually going on up there. Or maybe she does and she just doesn't want to tell anyone. But the one thing that I thought was funny was that the rep told me that as far as the limits go, they're just random numbers. I just feel sorry for, you know, the honest people that are working for those testing facilities and they're just going to get screwed over. But when those people get found out and they get shut down, there has already been a testing facility here in California that has gotten shut down for falsifying test results. RIP Sequoia Labs. <laughs> But it's not like these testing facilities are gonna get away with it. And if cannabis manufacturers are gonna go to them and get their stuff tested, obviously they're gonna get it tested by more than one testing facility. That's just the standard because you never know if you're gonna get one that's a super low testing or a high testing. Because of that 10% variance, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different testing results. And usually for the most part, just people that want to get the best numbers are obviously going to go with the highest testing place or whatever place gives you the fastest turnaround and the highest testing results. And CannaSafe actually promised a 24 hour turnaround. And to guarantee that you have never failed any tests and to give you a 24 hour turnaround, that just seems way too good to be true. And of course, in this industry and probably every other industry, when it sounds too good to be true, it most likely is. I just love how we find so much more about this industry. And it's funny now that I have just gotten this new job and learning more about what's been happening in the industry, at least here in California, man, there is some corrupt people out there and corrupt companies. But at the same time, some of them are smart. I give that to them because a lot of these companies are gaining clout or we'll just say, sorry, I, I hate using that word. They'll just gain a lot of popularity on social media 
and just by showing their product and no one has ever even tried or most people have never even tried their product um i mean i don't want to name any any uh companies out right now but yeah i think they figured out the algorithm of how to grow at least on social media and through cannabis and it's basically just building hype that's all it is <laughs> And once you've built the hype, then you can go legal if you choose to put your money back into the company. But a lot of people, they spend it all on, you know, fancy shirts and clothings and all this chains and shit. But, but I can tell you that if I were to start my own cannabis brand or cannabis business, I would definitely be doing it a lot different than how a lot of these companies are. But... At the same time, you know, everybody's business minds are different. Um, business ethics was a class. So <laughs> obviously, obviously you're going to have to come into those, to those obstacles, but it all depends on how you deal with them. That was a little outside cannabis knowledge, I guess this time, <laughs> but alrighty y'all. I want to thank you guys. If you've been watching for this long, I know this was kind of a longer one. I actually don't even know how long the time this doesn't even show on the little screen, but I know it was definitely a longer one than usual, but Again, thank you guys for watching. And you know, every Friday at 4.20 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have our conversation where we just talk about various topics in the cannabis industry. And obviously, if you guys have any of your cannabis questions, then feel free to ask them and that way you can get them answered live. Yeah, if you guys have any of your cannabis questions, you can feel free to ask me on Twitch live or in the comments. And I'll definitely get to them as quick as I can. And of course, you know, be sure to like, subscribe. And yeah, if you do have any other comments or anything just about the cannabis industry in general, feel free to leave it down in any one of the videos. I'll, I see them all. So. But alrighty, y'all. I'll see you live or in the next video. Deuces.